Good morning, my dear students. Myself, Dr. Sudharani, and today I'm going to methods of teaching, which is the unit five of your communication education technology subject. And you have already studied about the various methods of teaching in your previous classes, like lecture method, demonstration method project, role play, symposium, seminar, various methods of teaching you have seen in your previous classes. And today's topic, we are going to see on the clinical methods of teaching. So in our today's lecture, we'll see about introduction about the clinical methods of teaching. We will move on towards the, what are the objectives of the today's class and which are the various methods of the clinical teaching and what will be our learning outcomes and we'll have an exercise and uh, you will go through all the references. As you all know, like that of in the classroom teaching, classroom teaching, you have seen about the lecture method and even you have learned about the demonstration method or laboratory method, you can say, Many methods of teaching we have learned. How we can effectively teach in our classroom. Similarly, in the clinical area also, the nursing students, when they go for the clinical areas, they need to deal with the patients. They have to see the patients. The theoretical aspect is different from the clinical aspects. It is nothing but it is bridging the gap between the theory and as well as the practical. So whatever we have learned in the theory, we are going to apply practically in our clinical situations and we will see the real actual situation on the patients. So many a times we'll be studying in our class regarding the appendicitis, malaria, everything theoretically we will study. So how, what is it? How it causes? What are the signs and symptoms? What are the clinical features? What are the positive factors? How um, the uh, treatment is being uh, given to the patient? Okay, that is the bookish language which we are studying. And actually, when we go to the clinical area, we will correlate both the theoretical as well as our practical. So, when we go for the clinical area, we will find a patient of an uh, malaria. Then, that particular malaria patient came with what signs and symptoms? What were uh, his. Uh, area of dwelling and all so that we by these all things we will come to know what are what is the positive factor as we all know malaria is spread through a mosquito only but how the mosquito is spread that we especially in the stagnant waters so in that case if the patient is staying nearby a water area where the water stagnation is there because of all these conditions he might be having the malaria and there are certain signs and symptoms of the malaria, fever, chills, because the hot flushes will be there. So the patient will be getting fever, okay, and then he will get chills, and then he will get again sweating. So these are always the signs and symptoms which are reading in the our theoretical. But we actually, when we go to the patient and when we ask the patients or when we see the case sheet of the patient, there also we will find the similar findings or somewhat uh, we can say the bookish findings also. And there may be some extra clinical features also other than the, uh, what we have learned in our classes. So how a teacher, how effectively, how he or she being a clinical instructor can teach the students in the clinical area by using, uh, using the various methods of the clinical Okay, nursing is a field requiring the clinical skills to take care for the patients as well as to handle the real life situation. Experience in education of the nursing students is considered as a lifeblood of the nurse educator. So, Nurse educators have a responsibility to provide the most effective clinical instruction to facilitate the best learning. The learning process in the nursing is very unique because nursing student should be able to perform the activities of the profession in live situations. As I told you that what we have learned in our theoretical 
that we are going to apply in the clinical, that is in the life situations. Whereas general education, there is simply understanding the principle in the laboratory setup or on the non-human articles. I mean, it means to say that in our classrooms, we are just simply learning the concept. The basic concepts will be learned by us and we are uh, not learning actually the situations, real situations, but we are going through the our basic uh, principles will be cleared and we will be understood about the concept of the uh, basics. That's why learning experience in the nursing must provide an opportunities to apply theoretical principles to the real time situations on daily basis at bedside or in the community. So what will uh, this type of learning experience in the nursing provides a greater opportunity or gives a good opportunity for the nursing students so that whatever they have learned in their theory that will be applied to their practical aspects. That's it, it might be in the bedside or whether in the hospital sector or maybe in the in this unit, we will discuss about the various clinical teaching methods. So the concept is clear for you about the clinical methods. So clinical teaching methods, there are various methods of the teaching where we are going to implement what we have learned in the theory that we are going to implement in our real thing. And we are understanding the things much more so that we can provide a comprehensive nursing care for our clients. So the objectives of the today's class, that is to identify and describe the various types of clinical teaching methods and application of the clinical teaching methods into the nursing practice, identifying the learning theory, describing the teachable moment, describing the teaching style, and planning the ways to improve their teaching style. These are the objectives of our today's class. So we'll start by the first method of the teaching, that is the clinical teaching. So as you can see in the picture, a mentor is there or a teacher is standing and there are some students who are around the teacher and there is a patient lying on the bed and the teacher is teaching to the students. In preparation of professional practice, the clinical setting is a place, is a place where the clinical practice is a place where the students are coming in contact with the patient for the purpose of testing theories, for the purpose of testing theories, means the student is directly coming in contact with the patient. For what purpose? For testing the theories which they have learned in the theoretical Okay, and they are learning with the skill. So, the clinical method or the clinical teaching is where the student or a nursing student okay, come for their professional practice into a clinical area for the purpose of testing their theories, that is, applying their theoretical knowledge, and they are learning the Then how can we define this clinical teaching? Clinical teaching is an individualized or a group teaching to the nursing student in the clinical area by the nurse educators or by the staff or by the clinic manager. So what do you mean by clinical teaching? Clinical teaching may be an individualized. Individualized in the sense one to one, one teacher and one student or one teacher with a group of the students in the clinical area. The teaching which is taking place either individually or to a group by the teacher to the nursing students. Okay, the teacher might be a nurse educator or maybe a staff of a hospital or maybe a clinical nurse manager. In other words, clinical teaching is a vehicle 
that provides students with opportunity to translate basic theoretical knowledge into learning of variety of intellectual and psychomotor skills needed to provide patient centered quality nursing care it means to say that clinical teaching method is a way or it is a source or it is a, it is a vehicle for the students okay it is providing it is a way or it is giving it is a vehicle how it is providing your help how it is helping the students so that they are getting an opportunity or they are getting a way or they are getting a uh, uh, the way where they can translate their basic theoretical knowledge means what they have learned in their classroom those theoretical knowledge is converted into okay the intellectual or psychomotor skills what they have learned in the theory that they are going to apply it in their clinical area so that they will provide a better care to their patient that is a quality centered quality nursing care teaching in the clinical setting is a challenge and that is different from those encountered in the classroom so this type of clinical teaching method is but different what we teach in the classroom how it differs because in the theoretical we are learning in 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 front of only the our group of the students and there what were we are learning that is not on the real life okay we are learning it on some dummies or we may just we are going to the books and we are reading it and we are the teacher is teaching you people so the everything comes in the non living things like okay or it may be in the laboratory where we are not having actual real situations but in teaching in the clinical setting there we are encountering a real life situations so in our theoretical language we will be in that accidental case will be having a bleeding loss of uh, blood will be more that time the patient will go for the shock unconsciousness these all things we are studying in our theory but when actually we see how the accident patient really looks how much blood loss will be occurring for that particular patient as a nurse what we have to do how we have to assess an unconscious patient what was the first aid needed so these all things will come in our clinical so this is how we are applying our theoretical knowledge to our clinical skill so this is but different from a clinical uh, uh, teaching method of the class towards the clinical like any other skill based profession nursing also requires a development of a relationship between the theory and practice similar to like of other professions also we also have to in the nursing profession also we have are having a or we have to maintain or we have to develop a relationship between both the theory and the practice you can answer a question here and you can proceed next what are the purpose of clinical teaching first is to develop communication skills and maintaining the interpersonal relationship and to maintain a high standard of nursing practice to become independent enough to practice nursing next is to develop cognitive and psychomotor skills next to develop individualized care in a systematic holistic approach next to develop high technical competent skills next to practice our various procedure to collect and analyze the data to learn various diagnostic procedures learn various skill in giving health education to the client and to develop the proficient efficiency in carrying out the various procedures that is to develop a communication skill and maintain the interpersonal relationship when the student go for the clinical setting the student will come in interaction with the various members of the health team as well as the patient 
so with the when so with the help of the communication skills they can maintain a good interpersonal relationship with members then with the help of clinical teaching we can maintain a high standard of nursing practice we can maintain a good standard of the nursing practice and we can become an independent enough to practice our nursing when we go to the clinical setting when we learn the things so that time what happens we can directly apply and we can do our independent practice without the help of our seniors also that is providing the care next help it will help to develop our cognitive effective as well as our psychomotor skill it helps to provide individualized care in a systemic and holistic approach when we apply this our theory to our clinical it helps to provide an individualized that is a one patient care in a proper systematic way or in a holistic approach through the clinical methods of the teaching we can develop a high competent skills as we learn from the theory and we are applying in the practice so it will help us for developing our high technical competent skills and also helps to practice the various procedures which we have learned in our theory and it will help us to collect and analyze also the data when we go to the clinical setting we will take the history of the patient after taking the history of the patient so we can correlate the things which we have learned in our theory so we can analyze the data also then we can learn the various diagnostic procedures in the clinical setting many a times uh, it may not be possible to learn all the laboratory procedures or all the clinical diagnostic procedures in the laboratory so it will also help us to learn the various diagnostic procedures in our clinical setting and in turn it will help to learn the student the various skills in giving health education technique for the client the student will learn how to give the, the education health education in by using various methods of teaching and it will help to develop the proficiency and efficiency in carrying out the various procedures when the student start to provide the care then it will develop the efficiency and it will be efficient in carrying the various procedures next what are the principles of the so clinical education should reflect the nature of the professional practice whenever a person or whenever a nurse student is going to the clinical teaching the first thing is that whatever the student is going to practice whatever the student is going to give the care to the patient that reflects the professional practice of that particular nurse or the nurse student so our clinical education should be in a way that it will must reflect our Practice. Next, clinical teaching is supported by climate of mutual trust. Whenever we are in the clinical teaching, we be supported by the environment, and there should be the development of the mutual trust and respect. Respect in between the patient as well as the teacher and the students. Clinical teaching and learning should focus on essential knowledge, skill, and attitude. the clinical teacher or um, one who is going to take the clinical teaching should mainly focus on the essential knowledge what is the essential knowledge required what are the skills required and what is the attitude to be required or what is to be taught next guidelines for selection of methods so there are various clinical teaching methods so out of which how we can find out which type of methods we need to implement in so or in the teaching the first one is it should be appropriate to objective and desired be the changes the clinical teaching method which are we are going to adopt should be appropriate and as per the desired behavioral change and it should must be accordance with the principles of learning clinical teaching should be in accordance with the principles of the learning and it should be in accordance with the capacity of the students the students capacity also we have to see which type of method will be suitable for the students uh, for example the first year students are there and i am going to teach them about the bed making okay so i have already taught the bed making procedure in the laboratory 
and now I am going to teach the student in the clinical setting. According to the capacity, capacity in the sense, how many students are there, whether there are availability of the all the resources are there or not. And even we have to see how well the students can cope up with that particular time. Next, it must be accordance with the availability of the resources. That I mean to say that, as I told you, I'm having 10 beds and with the 10 students, then I can assign each student to one one bed and I have to guide them. Or I can make up uh, if there is one patient, only a single patient I'm having and I'm going to teach on that patient's mean. I have to select only a limited number of the group of the students and I have to repeat it. So according to the availability of the resources, what resources we are having, accordingly we have to plan for the clinical method. And it should be according to the teacher's ability to use it effectively and creatively. Not only it is with the capacity of the students or availability of the resources also, but the teacher who is going for the clinical teaching should have an ability or should be confident that the particular clinical teaching method which the teacher is going to adopt or opt, that teacher should know how to use it and how creatively he can implement it and how effectively he can deliver his class of clinical. So next one more question we will have and we'll move on to the differences between the classroom and clinical teaching. So now what is the difference between the classroom teaching and the clinical teaching? Very small difference. We can see here. So in the classroom teaching, how is the classroom teaching going on? In the classroom, we are having more number of students. That is a large group of the students we are having and one teacher is teaching all the large group of the students. And in the clinical teaching, what we are doing, either it might be individualized or we can go for the small group. In the classroom, we are not focusing on the patient. Here in the clinical setting, we are focusing on the patient. In the classroom, we are gaining the knowledge and the gained knowledge is applied in the clinical. In the classroom teaching, we are making a theoretical framework. And in the clinical setting, we are doing the clinical reasoning. In the classroom, the teachers and students ratio is large. And in the clinical setting, the teachers and students ratio will be small. In the classroom teaching, the students are passive, but in the clinical teaching, the students are active. Means they are directly involved in the procedures. In the classroom teaching, the students are less interactive, but in the clinical teaching, the students are more interactive. So, what are the factors influencing the clinical? Group interaction skills, clinical supervision skill, clinical competence and professionalism, knowledge, analytic and analytical ability, organization and clarity of the presentation, enthusiasm and stimulation of the interest. So these are certain factors which can implement the group interaction skills when there will be good interactions skills, we have a good clinical teaching, then the supervisor should we have a good supervision skill on all the students, the clinical competency and professionalism should be high, and the teacher should have a knowledge and an analytical ability also, then he or she should have a good organization and the clarity of the presentation should be there, and there should be enthusiasm and stimulation of the interest by the teacher to the student. Next, here are some clinical teaching methods which a teacher or a mentor can use for clinical teaching. So, which are the clinical teaching methods? The first type of clinical method may be bedside cleaning, then there are nursing rounds, then we have nursing shift reports, nursing care conferences, we have demonstrations, we have nursing case studies, 
we have process recording, laboratory method, nursing assignment, and field trip. So these are the various clinical teaching methods. Let's move on to the bedside clinic. In the bedside clinic, in the picture you are seeing, there is a patient that and teacher students are standing beside the teacher and the teacher is teaching students. So how the bedside clinic is defined? It is a method of clinical teaching, which is carried out either by either by the group visits, the patient or the patient is brought to the conference room in order to study the problems associated with particular disease or a disorder. What is bedside clinic? Bedside clinic is a type of a clinical teaching method where either a group of students are visiting the uh, patient or the patient is directly brought to the conference room where the students are there. Why, it is, why they are being, uh, doing so? So that in order to study the problems associated with that particular disease or a disorder. For example, I was taking an example of, now let us take an example of appendix. Okay. So appendix operation that patient is already there or the appendix operation is going to take that particular patient. And so we are going to study about the appendicitis or appendix problem that patient. Either we are directly going to the bedside of the patient, the students, and we are studying about the particular disease or disorder, or we are bringing the patient only to the our study room where we have made a small study room at the hospital also. Then we have to always ensure the presence of the patient. Whenever we go for the bedside cleaning, that time we need to ensure that there is a presence of that particular disorder or disease to the patient. And then patients with the typical diseases are selected. So usually we all usually get all types of patients in our hospital, but we have to go for selecting some typical disease clients. That is the rare disease condition clients we can identify. Next, what are the uses of the bedside clinic? 